Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here in this beautiful city, and it's, uh, I'm sure that you're all very eager to listen to this presentation, which is one of the last, and it's what's holding you from having some refreshments and food later. Um, like, like he said, my name is Israel Alguindig. I work for a company in Chicago called Aptake that essentially believes that there is no reason for machines to break in this day and age. And that is because machines are very highly instrumented. They report data back to headquarters constantly. And that data, um, alongside with data about maintenance and repairs, alongside with data about uh, geography or weather where the machine operates, can provide a very clear picture of machine health. And we use that information to both improve reliability of machines, but also to improve their useful life. So the outcome is to improve how you run your equipment and how much use you get out of it. Before I do that, um, before I tell you more about the industrial AI field, I wanted to just kind of recap um, what AI is in the first place, right? Um, AI, um, it's a term that has been around for many, many years. Uh, it's probably as old as McDonald's, from what I heard earlier today. And when I went to school and I studied AI, uh, AI was defined to be a, a bucket of artificial intelligence, uh, I'm sorry, computer science research where all the questions that were an answer will put into, looking for solutions, right? Um, so when you think about AI, it's not a single technology, it's a collection of technologies. And um, also as important it is that there is all kinds of new questions that come into that bucket, and we heard a lot of those today. So AI is an evolving concept, and it includes many, many different technologies. The um, motivation for studying artificial intelligence was twofold. One was to understand how the brain worked, but it was also to mimic what it did, right? And so today we find ourselves with this evolving question about, is AI here to replace human beings? Uh, especially in the workplace. Um, and our thesis is that AI fundamentally complements what we do. There is no possible way that artificial intelligence can do what we do on a daily basis. And the perfect combination of capabilities is when you marry the imagination of the human brain with the ability to do fast computations um, that the digital brain can create. So um, there is all kinds of other questions around what do we do with a if we're trying to create new capacity with AI systems, what do we do with that capacity, right? And so we have to think hard to decide how do we best utilize that new capacity that we're creating. And I heard a really interesting example yesterday where, as you well know, medical diagnostics is an area where there is a lot of work underway and where there's excellent results being published every day. So what do we do with the extra time that the physician has? Because now diagnostics can be done fairly um, uh, computationally, if you will. Um, and then we have a question about, is the physician going to sit there and simply write prescriptions? Or is the physician going to use the time that he has now or she has now to, do, to work on different problems, to spend more time with patients, and to do better healthcare, right? So those are the kind of things that we're hoping artificial intelligence will continue to create. It's more capacity. Um, another great example is if we used to work from 8, 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, can we work until 4 o'clock instead, right? Because we're now more productive and able to do more things. Um, the other big, big um, and interesting story is that AI is just about becoming real, right? We're seeing extraordinary results, but the truth of the matter is that we're starting to scratch the surface, right? Somebody mentioned this earlier, um, I think it was the gentleman from Boeing. Um, there is an enormous amount of data that's generated daily, and actually today we generate more data every day than we did for hundreds of years. Um, but we're only using about 1% of that data. So there is an enormous amount of data sti still to be uh, harnessed. Um, and so among the many different applications of AI, one of the ones that's most, um, the better known and the, the credited with a lot of the value is machine learning, right? And the idea with machine learning is creating a digital model 
of an artifact or an asset or a machine so that you can then do um, modeling and you can do better diagnostics and you can understand better how that machine fails. You don't have to do that um, with, uh, with um, engineering systems or uh, mechanical systems. You can do that with data now and create pretty reasonable um, simulations of a machine. The value of artificial intelligence and all these emerging technologies in the consumer world is well understood. We carry around devices that are very powerful, that allow us to do a lot of things. We have, uh, in our homes, we have connected devices that allow us to be very efficient. So the value in the consumer group is well understood and is well documented. What is not so well known today is the value that it has in the industrial space. And that value is staggering. If you think about the possibilities of using AI in mining, for example, where you can keep a, a whole truck going longer and create more um, and extract more mineral for the ground or process more mineral, there's an enormous amount of value to be created. In the rail space, if you can make sure that trains that depart arrive in time and don't fail on the route, um, that they're properly fueled before they leave, that they're properly crewed before they leave, you can create tons of value, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but um, this is the, the part of the market that we're trying to target, is this tremendous amount of value to be created in the industrial space. What does that look like? Um, in the rail space, for example, the fact that you can know when a train is going down hills or you know when a, a, um, a signaling will ask you to stop the train, if you can process that information ahead of time, you can actually optimize your fuel usage so that you save a tremendous amount of money, right? Also, if you are able to uh, use the data from a train before it arrives at a repair facility and use that data to do diagnostics and tell the shop personnel exactly what the train is exhibiting, you can save enormous amount of money, enormous amount of fuel, and enormous amount of noise reduction, right? So this is, in rail, is a really interesting, just the optimization of the fuel spend itself is an enormous number. If you add to that what you can save by making sure that you have the right parts at the repair facility, that you have the right infrastructure available, the right technician available, you can see how the money starts to become really, really big. Um, Uh, in mining, you have essentially the, the situation that I, that I described to you before. A 1% in annual productivity for the mining industry is worth an enormous amount of money. And then in wind, um, you can see that if you can manage to improve the utilization of the equipment and improve your productivity, you can actually add tremendous amount of money to that industry. So imagine, for example, if you have a wind farm, you have hundreds of wind turbines, and you're able to have the turbines tell each other in which direction the wind is blowing and how hard it's blowing. Just imagine the ability to do that and to have the turbines react to each other and communicate with each other to create efficiencies. Right? That's the kind of things that we're trying to, um, to turn into reality. And then if we come to our daily lives, um, somebody was asking me earlier, where, where, where is, when is AI going to be here? AI is already here. Um, we live in a world where connectivity is the norm, where every single dollar that we spend is tracked, where every single movement we make is tracked, and where our preferences are well documented, right? Uh, both as individual and as a community. And so AI is already here. I think the value of AI for us is that it can be used to create better experiences, right? And we do that by thinking about this in a, as a loop, right? 
we, we create actions or we act, and then that data is essentially used to feed data models that are then validated by users, and that validation then makes the model even more precise. And we continue to spend money or we continue to go places, and the data is tracked, and that data is then fed to the data models with the feedback from the user, and it continues to meet the models more and more precise. And so um, I was talking to a friend of mine who used to be the data analytics lead for Starbucks. And she was telling me how the idea is to essentially understand what kind of beverage you buy, at what time you buy it. And they, she said, it is very easy to do this for a simple individual. The big problem is when somebody shows up at Starbucks with a friend and then buys a different drink that we had never seen before, and then now the quest becomes, when is this friend going to show up so we can be ready for that friend? Right? So it's a really interesting problem, um, and one the data is helping us resolve every day. Here's the other part of AI that's really, really valuable, and we haven't really talked about this today. But if you think about what we're doing with the Earth resources, we're spending about one and a half times what we should be spending. So the resources that are needed to maintain our lifestyles today are worth one and a half Earth, right? So with artificial intelligence, we can take that number down to one and make sure that we're not wasting resources and that we're not spending our, the next generation's resources. A lot of it, I think, is, if you think about this carefully, it's a lot of it is waste. Today, we waste en energy, we waste minerals, we waste wood. There's a lot of waste that we could actually recover if we're very thoughtful about how we optimize and use AI to help us. Um, another frequent conversation that I have is about people and jobs. And there's this th thinking that AI is essentially going to take um, people out of the job market because those jobs are going to be replaced. And what I would argue with you is that similar to what happened in the Industrial Revolution, we ended up with different jobs, right? We ended up with jobs that had different requirements, but at the end of the day, what happened was that we expanded the economy and the job market rather than to shrink it, right? And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. I think what's very important, though, is to recognize the fact that we're going to need new skills in the new era, and we'll talk about that in a minute, because there's also all kinds of implications that AI brings to light. Um, and then the last part of my, sorry, my microphone is not cooperating today. And the last part of the discussion that I wanted to have with you is about what are the ethical implications of AI, right? And I think that there is responsibility to be shared all over the place. I think as technologists, we have responsibilities. As consumers, we have responsibility. And also as enterprises and, and as a society, we have responsibilities. Um, the first one that I would like to talk about is, uh, from a society standpoint, we have, um, we have to make sure that we have the right infrastructure for this new era. And what I mean by that is, the infrastructures that we have and the social processes that we have are going to be challenged by this new technology. For example, imagine a city that's totally operated by driverless cars. Okay? Driverless cars. These cars can be driven all day long. They don't need a driver. They don't need to be parked because they're all constantly going to be moving, right? And the challenge will, be, will become First of all, what happens to taxation that's related to, to driving cars in cities? What's going to happen to parking spaces and parking lots? What's going to happen to people that drive cars for a living? Right? So it requires a completely different infrastructure than what we have today. We have to recognize that and we have to act on that. Um, we also, I also believe that there is a different kind of social contract that we will have with people. As a city, for example, the kind of training that I offer my citizens needs to be much more relevant to the new technology and how to use it. And as an employer, I also have to make sure that my, employers, my employees are constantly retrained so that they can stay relevant in this new era. So there's a ton of social implications to this. Um, another one is um, 
we know that this technology can challenge our institutions. I mean, that's pretty clear in the US today. There's been an ongoing investigation for months about whether the people try to influence the election. And so we have to be conscious of these threats and of this um, and, and of this uh, shortcomings, and we need to be able to address them. I think for me, the most important is what we call algorithm bias, right? Which is, if I use a, train, if I use a training set of data that's, implicit, that's implicitly biased, then I can create outcomes that are really, really dark, right? I can prevent people from getting jobs because my data is biased. Or I can uh, you know, utilize a legal system in a way that's not fair, right? You know, from the technology side, there's all kinds of other things. Um, the first thing is that I need to be, make sure that I'm working on the right problem, right? Because the same algorithms can be used to create good, can be used to create bad. So I have to make sure that I'm solving the right problems. And then as, a, as, a, you know, as an individual, I have to make sure that I preserve the values that we've always cherished as a society, right? So I have to make sure that I use technology for... Um, in a fair way, that I use technology to create value for everyone, that I use technology that's progressive, that takes us to a new place that's much better, that is fair, and that is respectful. And those values need to prevail in this new era. Does that make sense? So I wanted to give you a little, a, a, a little bit of the challenges that we wrestle with on a daily basis as we move forward. Um, and I wanted to invite your questions you know, at this session. Thank you.